If you've ever been fishing before, you know how difficult it is to transport a spinning rod reel to and from the lake because of how flimsy they are. They can break really easily. With just a little amount of pressure, they can snap like nothing. With there, there are fly rod cases out there that do a great job protecting, but there's very little out there for spinning rod. Our project, the pole protector, does a good job of protecting the pole during transportation and during extreme weather conditions to save costs in the long run. Because if you have multiple fishing poles and you're going to and from the lake often, you will likely break poles multiple times in the process. So some of the previous solutions that were made before our fishing rod case are first a fishing rod sleeve, which is right there. So for a fishing rod sleeve, uh, those are mainly for like bait casters and there are ones for spinning rods as well, but they're not as protective because it's just a sleeve. And then next up is a fly rod case. And a fly rod case, I mean, just like the name, that's basically just for fly rods and you can't do that for like a spinning rod or for a bait caster. Next up is a fishing rod bag. And basically this is kind of like a backpack that you can just carry, but same thing, it's not a hard case. All right, so we had three main options for our decision matrix on which project we were gonna do. Clearly we ended up going with our pole protector and this is the decision matrix on how we ended up deciding that that was the right idea. We decided that to make a super secure case, we needed strong durability. So the pole protector it had a 10 versus the other two options not being as durable with a nine and an eight. The cost efficiency, they were all about the same cost a nine. They're all pretty cheap to make. They're, they're only, they didn't take a ton of money to make these but they're still efficient. Um, easiness to transport, we put, we put a nine for our um, project because it is pretty easy to transport. It's just slightly heavy. That's the only reason it's not a 10. Um, for the other options, they were not as easy to transport, which is a big um, deal when, we're, when we want this to be a super easy thing to be able to move because you need to be using it often. For the quality of the material, we gave it a 10. The quality of this material was really good because obviously it's not breaking when we drop it or anything like that and it protects it from strong weather versus the other two options. We're only sevens, which again, made us just more strong on the our first option. Weight, they were all about an eight. They were all about the same weight. Um, the good thing about ours is it is a little bit heavy, but it is also still super easy to transport with the handle we put on it. One person can easily carry it. So all in all, it totaled up to the one that we went with being a 46 out of 50 in total versus the other two being a 40 and 38. So clearly we went with the first option, which is our pole protector. Okay, so for our survey analysis, we did some research to find out some information on what other people who fish think of our product. So our first question was for them, have you ever broken a fishing pole? 75% said yes. Our second question was, would you purchase a case to prevent a pole from breaking? And 53% said yes. The third question was, would you pay more money for a better quality case? And 72% said yes. Have you ever broken a fishing pole during transportation? 56% said yes. The fifth question was, if you had a fishing pole case, would you remember to put your rod in the case each time you go somewhere? And 62.5% said yes. The sixth and final question was, how much would you pay for a spinning rod case? 32% uh, said between zero and $10. 37% said between 10 and $20. And 31% said between 20 and $30. So basically, um, our market research plan was that the solution should not be based around fixing it once they have already broken, but instead stopping them from breaking in the first place. I mean... There's no point in trying to buy a new rod that's really expensive or trying to fix it when you can just prevent it in the first place. Um, some of our objectives include find a good padding or mold to add to the inside of the case. So something that's going to allow it not to move around. Uh, finding a good hard material that is not going to be like impaled with by anything, which we ended up using wood, which was really good. Um, next was test hard objects on the outside of the case and see what damage occurs. Like we said, we dropped it from five feet. 
which really showed that it did not break and that it was really durable. Um, next, we want to make sure to get the right dimensions for the inside of the case to hold and protect the whole rod, which we did. It fits perfectly for a six and a half foot rod. Next, we, we want to ensure that the rod cannot be damaged from rolling around the case, which the padding that we put inside with the styrofoam works perfectly. Um, lastly is our problem justification. Uh, so we found that in a 2017 study, 16.5% of Americans ages six and up went fishing at least once. The second one was on average, there are 885.2 million fishing outings per year, uh, meaning fishing trips. The third one was from 2016 to 2017, there was a 0.4% increase in Americans who fish. Then the fourth one was 29.29 million people hold a paid fishing license as of 2020. If I was there, market size in fishing is $10.07 billion in 2020. And lastly, there were 65.72 thousand fishing sector businesses in 2020. So for the analysis for the pole protector, it is to protect spinning rods from breaking when something is dropped on it and also during transportation. Um, so spinning rods are not super durable, so without good protection, they can easily snap. And we wanted to make sure our project protected a pole in extreme conditions. And one issue that, one issue that we ran into was it would not stay shut during transportation. So we ended up adding a latch to it, which really helped. And it's really easy to access and use. And then one other issue that we found is that it was really like kind of awkward to carry. So we put it at, so we put a handle on it, which really helped. And then one last issue is that it was difficult to find strong, durable material to protect from harsh weather conditions. Okay. So next up is our testing procedure. And basically the purpose of it is to test whether or not the case protects the pole. And as long as the case does not break, um, the pass and fail is basically if it fails, that is because either the case broke or the pole itself broke because that's kind of the whole point of our case is to protect the pole. Um, some of the materials are a camera, water, a rock, and a, and a bed of a truck like that. And some of the conditions are that we will start at four feet and we work all the way up to six feet of dropping it. Um, we, we may also drop it from, from different angles to test whether or not the case can survive all of it. Um, the procedure is first secure the pole in the case. Next, drop the case using the drop test explained above. Three, next drop on all different angles. Four, next throw the case in the truck bed. Five, then drive around with it in the back for a week. Six, finally take pictures of what the case looks like in the end. Which, that is it in the bed of the truck at the start. And that's it at the very end. So there was no damage to the case, but it just moved a little bit. And then that was the drop test and there was no damage to neither the pole nor the case. Then these are all of our finished pictures. These are the two main pictures. This is the inside with the styrofoam that holds the pole. And then this is the outside with the latch, as you can see right there, and then the handle.